WWE superstar Logan Paul is finding himself in hot water due to some remarks made on his recent episode of Impulsive. We're going to talk about it in this video. Logan Paul is obviously no stranger to controversy, but now things are a little bit different because Logan Paul is the host of the number one podcast in the world called Impulsive, but at the same time too, he's a newly signed WWE superstar, and with that comes a lot of responsibility. Now, before Logan Paul became a WWE superstar, he's become very successful in the world of the influencer culture, obviously doing pro boxing, obviously he has the prime energy drink, he has the podcast, he has his YouTube videos. I mean, this guy was an absolute star, and it obviously made a lot of sense for WWE to bring him in, sign him to the company, and try to get some of that influence that Logan Paul has to bring new eyes and a new audience to the product. Now, with that being said, one of the big things here is that Logan Paul was recently talking about the topic of religion with his co-host, George Jankos, which you might have actually remembered him from WWE Crown Jewel when him and Mike Malak actually got involved in the main event match against Roman Reigns. Well, basically, this took Twitter and social media by storm. Because of these comments, a lot of people were offended by Logan Paul talking about religion and mocking religion. And it's one of those things where, you know, as a WWE superstar, you do carry a lot of responsibility. Now, at the end of the day, Logan Paul is no stranger to controversy. Logan Paul is no stranger to having people talk, and he definitely gets people talking. But a lot of people are wondering, in the wrestling world, how does this affect Logan Paul? And truth be told, there has been no reaction from WWE thus far, but it, it, it does bring up an interesting point, uh, you know, with some of that responsibility of being a WWE superstar, maybe certain topics just aren't worth talking about on a podcast. And, you know, it doesn't appear to me that WWE has any sort of creative control or anything like that with Logan Paul's podcast. We have seen former WWE superstars or current WWE superstars on his podcast. We saw them use the podcast to set up the Roman Reigns match for Crown Jewel. But at the end of the day, it doesn't look like WWE has any involvement on Logan Paul's side projects. And honestly, that would make a lot of sense because again, WWE is trying to get his audience to watch the WWE product. Now, because there hasn't been a reaction from WWE, it's really hard to say if there's going to be any issues that come from this. But at the end of the day, the most important thing that I want to mention here is that Logan Paul now being a WWE superstar does carry more responsibility. And there are things that maybe he should just stay away from on his podcast. And, uh, you know, hey, it's just one of those things where you don't want people talking about you in a negative light. And this is one of those situations where Logan Paul is getting people to talk about him in a negative light. And especially because he bounced back from his first controversy several, several years ago. You know, I think maybe Logan Paul should just kind of steer a different direction when it comes to his podcast. Uh, with that being said, I want to turn our attention to a new AEW signing. Maybe you watched AEW Dynamite. Action Andretti pulled off the biggest upset in AEW history by defeating Chris Jericho. Clean, no DQs, no roll-up pin. He hit the, the walking, running, shooting star press. Got the win, one, two, three, and then AEW announced that he was all elite. Now, if you're not familiar with Action Andrade, uh, let me just explain to you guys why I think this is such a great thing. First of all, off the rip, uh, Action Andrade is a really good indie wrestler, but the thing is, he hasn't really worked for like these big promotions really ever. Um, most people know him from MCW, uh, which he obviously holds the world championship there. But with Action Andretti coming to AEW and winning a match against Chris Jericho tells me that AEW has big plans for the guy. And honestly, I think this is really, really good for AEW. The best thing AEW did here was pull off a complete surprise without any distraction wins, without any bullshit attached to it. They let these two guys work. And a lot of people may have not been familiar with who Action Andretti is, but the best part is they got on board right away. And for AEW, it's all about pushing new stars. It's all about pushing new faces. It's all about doing the things that get the future of your company going. And with Chris Jericho believing that this guy is a star, it makes a lot of sense for Chris Jericho to put him over. In fact, I actually think this is going to add a very good layer to storytelling for Chris Jericho because he lost to Claudio and now he lost to the newcomer Action Andretti. Now, I really hope AEW actually capitalizes the momentum here because I firmly believe this is one of the greatest booking decisions the company has ever made. And it really goes to show you by watching AEW now, 
anything can happen at any point in time. And that was something that AEW was really good at doing in the first year and a half of being in business. And then throughout time, it kind of became a stalemate. So with that being said, I'm really excited about AEW bringing him in. I want to see more of this guy. I think this guy could do really good things. Hopefully we start to understand what his identity and what his vision is as a performer. And then from there, people will be able to get attached to him. Obviously being a good wrestler, it's great. But I feel like a lot of fans want something more, and it's up to AEW to present them in that way. But nonetheless, it's still fantastic news for AEW. Uh, and it's fantastic for Action Andretti because he literally made a historical mark in AEW history. Guys, WWE is bringing in Tatanka. What an interesting WWE return. Uh, it appears to be a one-off. He actually announced on his Facebook that he's been invited to appear on WWE's 30th anniversary of WWE Raw, which is taking place January 23rd in Philadelphia. And uh, obviously, WWE bringing talent back, it's no surprise. But a lot of people have been curious what type of legends would be bringing, you know, what type of legends would WWE be bringing back in this situation? Um, you know, what will we see from them? Are they going to be wrestling? Are they going to be the focal point? Truth be told, under the Triple H regime, it's going to be very interesting to see how he utilizes these legends. I've always criticized the way that Vince McMahon would bring legends onto the television product. I felt like it always took away from the upcoming stars. Um, and it's not like Tatanka is like the biggest name in pro wrestling, but the fact that he's going to return to WWE uh, for this episode of Raw tells me that there could be something in the works. Personally, what I would like to see is WWE just have the younger talent possibly interact with some of these guys backstage, but do the show as normal. Really focus on those storylines that you've been crafting and focus on getting talent over. And if you could do some backstage segments where maybe Tatanka or, you know, whoever else may be on the show can interact and put somebody over, I think that could be a really good thing. I don't expect Tatanka to wrestle. I don't expect any of the legends to wrestle, but if you're going to do something, uh, definitely make it as minimal as possible while trying to get the maximum impact from it all. And uh, it's exciting to see that WWE is doing a 30th anniversary of Raw, but at the same time too, I I've always hated these special editions because typically, I think except for Raw 1000, I think everything other than that has always been about the legends to the point where it literally overcrowded the show. And I do feel like certain talent benefited from the episode of Raw 1000. So if WWE can replicate that or even do better, then I think that would be a good start. Obviously, WWE celebrating the anniversary is a big deal because of Triple H being in charge. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what legends return. And I understand it's WWF Raw, but I always think back to 2002. Some of my favorite moments on WWE Raw included Scott Steiner. So... Now that appe that appears to be like a, a relationship that it has been fixed. Maybe they could bring in Scott Steiner or some other names as well. Plus, you got Braun Breaker and NXT, so it makes a lot of sense. Going to be very interesting to see how WWE goes about it, but we know Tatanka's coming back. Uh, I didn't expect that, so... It'll be very interesting, and I'm excited to see what WWE does. Guys, as always, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I appreciate you guys all for watching, and if you're not subscribed, make sure you guys do that for real. Like, don't, yeah. Don't, don't miss out on these videos. Trust me. You don't want to miss out. We always got the big news. We always got the big topics. And I'm bringing you guys my analysis every single day. Thank you for watching.